So, uh, I will speak about 3DP, and that's uh, three-dimensional printing. And we will look forward 20 years, uh, but before that, I will look back to 1989 and compare the situation with uh, what happened in the music industry. And in uh, 1989, the music industry was basically like, it was large global companies, uh, local companies for different markets. Uh, the record company was of most important for the artists. Uh, the record company handles everything, production, distribution, marketing, and so on. The price of a CD, about 15 euro. The CD single, six euro. And the biggest threat to the industry was fake copies from China. And it was, uh, like the record companies had a lot of money that time, and they spent it thereafter. And the bosses was uh, the biggest stars. And this is Tommy Mottola from uh, Sony Music. But then suddenly something happened, uh, and the industry went upside down. And the young entrepreneurs arrived. Uh, first it was Napster, now it's the Pirate Bay, and today we can call it the Pirate Bay Revolution, the peer-to-peer -peer revolution. <coughs> and what happened then in 20 years? Suddenly the music industry, many different types of corporations, uh, global actors, public performances is most important to the artist. iTunes and Pirate Bay handles distributions and sales. The price of an MP3 album is suddenly five euro or free. The price of MP3 single, nine cent or free. The biggest threat has turned to illegal down downloading. Uh, the band Radiohead, they released their latest album on the internet for free and then people paid what they thought it was worth. And what I heard, they got a lot of money anyhow. Madonna signed her contract with uh, the concert uh, company instead of the uh, record company. Spotify has arrived that gives you free access to all the music for nine euro a month or if you can stand with commercials you have it for free. So if we then look to the furniture industry and what can happen there 20 years ahead. The 3DP, the 3D print technology. Then the furniture industry of today. We have large global companies, local companies for different markets. The producer most important to the designer. The producer handles everything, production, distribution, marketing. The price of a 3D printed lamp today is about 300 euro. The price of a 3D printed chair is 800 euro. And the biggest threat to the industry is fake copies from China. And in one of the daily magazines, in uh, Sweden this week, they had a big article about this. So if we compare the two, uh, then we can see that there's a lot of similarities between the music industry in 89 and the furniture industry of today. And the record company bosses are quite similar too. This is Giulio Capellini from the <laughs> Italian manufacturer. <laughs> and suddenly in the design business, Idols has appeared. So this is the biggest star in the design market, Mark Newson, uh, in the cover of the magazine. So what will happen then if the same situation appears in the furniture business as it did in the, um, in the music industry, that young entrepreneurs turn everything upside down? Maybe not I IKEA furnishing our homes anymore. It's 3D that takes over. And we will see the pirate bench revolution. <laughs> BDP. Um, and the furniture industry, if we then take what we learn from the music industry and put it into the furniture industry, we probably will have many different types of corporations, global actors, an explosion of services. I, Fern and Pirate Bench handled distribution and marketing. Retailer replaced by local 3D producers. The price of a 3D lamp, maybe 10 euro, I don't know. The price of a 3D printed chair, 20 euro, something. The biggest threat turned to illegal downloading. So the designer will find themselves in the same situation as the art music artists, illegal downloading of their uh, products. So. 
Uh, and you, uh, I go back there, but uh, I'm in the furniture business, but you can replace this to toys, mobile phones, whatever. We all will have the same situation. So if we again compare with another industry then, the photo industry. From the beginning it was analog developing of the images. Then the computer arrived, but still it was analog cameras. And today it's digital images. You can print wherever you want, bring the printer with you on your holiday or whatever. If we then take the furniture business, from the beginning it was handmade. Uh, then the computer arrived with these big machines that ma made uh, computerized production. Today we have the 3D printer arrived. And uh, basically you have many different kinds of uh, production facilities there. But this one, uh, object printer, print on top of each layer. And it hardened the, uh, each layer with UV light. So it's building three-dimensional structures in that way. Um, and what I heard, NASA developed the technique when um, they start planning trips to, the, to Mars. So they had to find a way to find uh, spare parts up in space. So they couldn't go back to Earth and pick them up. So they needed a, a way to produce there. And so if we look forward, probably the same thing will happen here, that you can Bring your, uh, your small uh, printer and then print your necklace before the dinner or something on the trip. So basically the same scene there. And if we look at some visions, when Sarah Palin arrived in the American election, uh, the Japanese uh, manufacturer of her eyewear went completely out of products because the interests were so huge around the globe for these glasses. So if we think that Victoria Beckham wears a new pair of glasses and uh, some paparazzi takes a photo and then uh, the day after it's all over the magazines uh, in the world. Then someone starts to model the uh, glasses and then upload it uh, to a 3DP site and then people around the globe start downloading it and printing it. So you will have an enormously fast spread of that products all over the world. Or we have the truck driver cruising out the autobahn. He's, uh, uh, something broke down in the truck and uh, he just sends a message to the closest gasoline station. Please print my spare part. And when he goes there, he has replaced the item and go on. Then I believe that Lego will have a huge legal property problem because <laughs> if you just imagine that someone makes an open source Lego program and then you can put in your villa or uh, if you scan your dog and just put it in the machine <laughs> and then uh, print. You can do everything in Lego then. Or we have um, this technique. I were in, had this lecture a year ago in Copenhagen and then I brought my daughter. And <coughs> we went through a store there and went in and took a three-dimensional photo of us. And uh, they printed us into this glass block in 10 minutes. It's a three-dimensional image there. And if we take this technique, and instead the wedding couple, they uh, take the three-dimensional photo outside the church, and then when the guest arrives at the dinner, they are themselves in top of the cake. Or the golf player that, of course, want himself uh, on the trophy instead of just a normal trophy. So how will, can we do this then? We probably can go into piratefern.com. You choose between all the different furniture. I choose the red one there. I can read about the product and then see that it's Patrick Yuan that did it in 2001. And then I go to where to print it. I see select my country and see that it's a printing shop five blocks away from me. So I make the payments and get the information that I can pick it up in two, uh, tomorrow afternoon, five o'clock. So will this really happen then? If I told you 20 years ago that you will have free access to all the music in the world, all the magazines, uh, or movies and so on, 
Would you have believed that for nine euros a month? I don't know. But this chair is already 3D printed. It's for sale on the internet. It's Patrick Yuan that did it. And this guy, Oraito, uh, is a French guy that got bored in the design school and uh, went off and then he started a website. He um, uh, started putting three-dimensional object that he made in the program on the website and looked like it was for sale. And then suddenly the interest on all over the world was so huge. So the companies behind the, the, what he hijacked, the brands, were uh, starting getting questions. Where can we find his product? And they were, uh, wasn't in production that time, but now they are. So now Big Lighter has started to produce that one. And what I heard, the Louis Vuitton bag was out as a fake cup in China before it was existing for real. <laughs> so he created a need on the internet, you can say. Uh, Bugatti Veyron is the first car in serial production that has 3D printed items inside the car. It's the dashboard that's made in a 3D printer. In the dental industry, they already started with 3D printed items and also in the medical uh, industry, the hearing aid are now uh, these days made in 3D printers. This guy from uh, America, he built his own printer and started to print with sugar. If we take that, probably a chef could start printing food then and just put the flavor exactly when he wants them and to, uh, to get the perfect meal. And I also saw a, a month ago on Discovery that in 20 years we will be able to print human organs so we can replace our parts that get bad. These are items that are already in production or 3D printed and uh, put it on the internet. So it's lamps, vases, uh, chairs. These lamps cost about 300 euro. It's a Janne Kittenen, a Finnish guy that makes them in serial production on the internet. The Swedish design group Front, they uh, put uh, 3D cameras in a room and then sketched the furniture in the air and got 3D files out of that and then in the end they uh, printed them in Helsinki in, a, in full scale. And today the object printer can mix materials. You can use different colors, you can do, use uh, soft and hard materials in the same print. You can use transparent and non-transparent material. So when can we print in metal and when can we print in textile? In metal we already can. These beautiful objects are printed. And I have one here, made in metal. Um, textile, the structure they already do, but it's still in plastic. Uh, so, but I believe that in five, ten years they will have real materials for fabrics. And if we see it like that, then we have everything to make a whole chair. You can do the metal frame, you can do the shell, the hard plastic shell. And to have the comfort, we just take rubber that we already can print and put in air channels and air bubbles. And then you have, uh, and then the fabric in the end, and you have a whole chair. So in five, ten years, we have a whole sofa, I believe. Printed. <coughs> and if we look at the, uh, the prices, then we can see in the printer market for uh, color prints, it happened a lot in uh, the years, like from the beginning it was 50,000 euro and today you can, everybody has it and it's 100 euro. So what will happen in the printer, 3D printer industry, probably the same, that it, the price go down and we have uh, a normal price so we all can start printing at home. The Architectonics uh, internet site is uh, already existing. They have thousands and thousands of furniture there. If you just replace where to buy it to where to print it and upload all the 3D files that already exist. Shapeways, a Dutch site, they uh, already have the structure for everything there. They, uh, you can choose your object and print it or you can upload your own object and print it or you can go to the 3D part database and choose what you want. So, what does this mean then? I believe that the design market will totally explode. The interest will be huge for this. 
less mass production, more unique objects. Perhaps it will be a random computer program that will change all objects, so it's a bit different for each print. Loads of independent producers, uh, for instance, the designers themselves. Environmental gains is less transports, items made locally. We don't need the DHL anymore. Smaller stocks, you print it when you need it. More recycling, use the material from the printed object and reuse it. And in the end, huge problem with legal property rights. Just <laughs> imagine someone da downloading a Nokia phone and then uh, take the random program and suddenly it's 10% changes in the surface. Is that a Nokia phone? I don't know. <laughs> but what I heard, that you can print the whole mobile phone uh, soon so with techniques and everything. So we'll soon there. Um, this summer I were uh, in an exhibition in Stockholm and uh, it's called uh, Stockholm Chetam and we were supposed to make jewelry with uh, symbols of Stockholm. So I went into the Google sketch and uh, found different buildings from <coughs> Stockholm. Uh, the Globe Arena, the City Hall, the Cakeness Tower and then I remodeled it and printed it as jewelry. And here is one of the rings I printed. Then. Earlier, I, I work a lot with 3D printing, but uh, this is a backbone lamp and a twist lamp that I made in 3D printing. It's a uh, uh, Belgian company that's produced. It's called Dark. It's already in production. Then I made a strange thing. Uh, I went to the Karolinska Hospital and uh, uh, did an MR scan of my head. And out of that, I got that file with uh, the... 300 layers of my head and out of that I took away all uh, eyes and ears and stuff and then in the end I made a lamp of my own brain and <laughs> So this lamp is now made in a limited series of 100 and these are the exact copy of my own brain, <laughs> and it's quite empty. So. Thank you very much. That was all. <laughs>